Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. It's an exciting day. I don't know what time it is where you are, but it's 10.15 time here. This is the new 10.15 QW, that's right, QW09 Android-based smartwatch that we are going to open up and show you. I know, we've had a lot of Android watches coming in, uh, all pretty much similar, but I think this is going to be a little bit different, so you may want to stick with us. Here's the watch, and it's got a uh, rubber kind of a uh, band to it. It's rather rigid, not really soft. It's not leather. It's not the silicone, so I guess I'd call that one probably a rubber band, yes? Inside the box, in addition, we have a user's manual and one of those little screen protector things. And then probably a USB charging cable. Now, the fact that this is a cable without a dock tells me that we might be in luck. That this might be one of those watches that has a USB port on the side. And it is. Look at that. You don't have to worry about pins on the bottom or... Uh, uh, a fancy dock that you have to put it in or magnetic coupling, you have a simple connection straight to the watch, right like that. That's the good news. The bad news is it makes this virtually not waterproof or even splash proof, um, kind of the trade off. But it is a nice and easy way to have a watch that you can charge anywhere because you got these everywhere. When you have to buy an extra dock or you lose it, you're really out of luck. Well, Let's unpeel some of the stuff on the watch here so we can see it. Nice glass screen on the surface. It looks like we have a uh, little piece of plastic over the camera, too. I just cut my fingernails. Wouldn't you know it? Well, we'll just leave that for right now. Um, one button, the USB port. And, check this out, the back is removable. And when you do remove the back, which it should just be a plastic thing. There we go. Removable back and removable battery. <laughs> Why does this always happen to me on camera? Hmm? Hmm? Okay, looks like I should be able to lift it out. There we go. A nice little um, 380 milliamp hour battery. And there's the place to put the SIM card inside. So it uses a nano SIM. There's no SD card or micro SD for expanded memory. But there is the removable battery, which is a nice uh, additional feature. Now... Nostalgically, one of the reasons I brought this one in, in addition, of course, to it being a full-on Android uh, watch that we can look at, 4.4 watch, is that this is almost identical to the very first watch that I reviewed that launched this channel way back pretty much two years ago. Two years ago, I got this number one G2, I think was the number of it. Look, look how similar these guys are. Isn't that interesting? Pretty much the same band. This had a different kind of designer clip on it. You don't see that kind of clip anymore. This was a really lame watch. Tethering watch, hardly any memory in it. It used a, a, a coupling uh, dock for charging. Uh, but it does have um, heart rate monitor and stuff in it. And that is from January of 2015. Now we skip ahead two years, and this is what we're looking at in terms of technology today. So just by way of comparison, if it wasn't for this baby here, you and I wouldn't be here right now. This is the one I decided to make a YouTube video just because, and that whole thing is launched into everything you see, over 200 videos. So thanks, number one. Thanks, the little G2. Almost 100,000 views on this video alone. And we're kicking in now with a watch that comes to us from Everbuying. The Everbuying um, 1015QW09. It's an Android 4.4 watch. 
that um, sports the whole Android operating system. It does all these good things. It's got the MTK6572 processor running dual core, 512 megabytes, 4 gigabytes. Not the speediest, newest, okay? But not a huge price either. So you're getting kind of last year's model, um, but you are getting a, a decent watch. It doesn't have the external memory. It uses the standard Wi-Fi. These are all the frequencies for doing your uh, 3G connectivity, which is good. And Bluetooth 4.0 with a capacitive screen, 240 by 240 resolution, a 2 megapixel camera. You notice the camera hasn't hardly changed in all these uh, months, years. They're still coming in at around 2 megapixels, sometimes up interpolated to 5, but still pretty low. It's nothing like what you can get on phones now. All these languages are supported, and of course it's got your standard uh, app complement. So... Let's turn it on and see what it'll do. Fun OS, it says at the very beginning. Okay, maybe that's the operating system overlay that it's running. Wow. Cute. Kind of long. <laughs> but there's the boot up process. We've got the first watch face on here. It's rather dim right now. I'm hoping there's a way we can brighten it. Um, let's try to see if we can find that first of all. Usually you tap to go in. Okay. Settings. Okay. Uh, date and time. Sound display. Brightness. Oh my goodness, it's up all the way. Brightness, okay. Yeah, there it's there it's down all the way. I've lost it completely. I really have. I can't even see it. I gotta go take it and try to bring it back up again. Well, I brought it back up full brightness. That's full brightness, folks. It's pretty dim. Sorry about that, but there's not very uh, bright a display on this one. I'm indoors, and I, you know, this is my typical background lighting, and they're usually yeah, brilliant, brilliant popping brightness, almost washing out the screen. So that's an issue, definitely. All right. Anyway, I got full brightness, and I adjusted the the display timeout, so it won't be too terribly long. Oh. It's interesting. You don't press and hold to change the watch faces, apparently. Okay. We have to learn about this watch. I scroll down, and I've got a barcode for the Fun OS, it looks like, which is probably the tethering um, app that they use. doesn't give me very long. SIM card, um, your Wi-Fi connection, and um, that's Bluetooth. And then there's the time and the battery charge at 51% right now. If I go down and then scroll over or over, nothing happens. If I scroll this way, I have sound slider. I have something that take. Oh, that takes us to settings. And that one. Hey, it's going out again on me. Okay, it's adjusting the brightness. In increments, it says it's at five now. That's its brightest. There's buttons up here at the top. Vibrate mode, ringing mode, and silent mode. We'll leave it in ringing mode. So you have your brightness and your sound and settings. And in the SOS in the middle, if you have an SOS number in here and your SIM card installed, you can press that and it'll make that emergency phone call. So it does support the SOS function as simple as swiping up and hitting the button. Or swiping up and hitting the settings. So let's walk through the settings before we even get into the apps. We have Bluetooth, we have Wi-Fi, we have a power savings. These are toggle switches and you can get on um, the network with that. You of course have the time settings for automatic 
uh, date, setting your time zone, and choosing your date format. That's pretty much standard. Language and input, as we've seen before, English. You can install your own keyboards if you want to. It has the Android keyboard and Google Voice, and it's got, it looks like a Chinese keyboard as well. Hopefully Android keyboard is the one that's selected. And in our sound area, we have the different volumes, the call ringtone vibrate. These are all the different sounds you can have. Oh wow, that's really soft. Let's make sure my volumes are up all the way. Oh, they're not. You notice I'm having a real hard time also sliding these. Okay, there we go. That's pretty responsive. Pretty loud, I mean. Um, I'm seeing a little dot when I touch the screen. I'm not sure if you're seeing that. It has to hit exactly in order for it to work. Okay, all of the watch sounds are up all the way now. And we were looking at the different ringtones. There's a whole bunch of them. Speakers over here. And when you put the back on, there's little holes for the speaker to come through. And that just snaps in place. And those are our watch ringtones. Um, oh, we got more things. Okay, you have the sounds for the dial pad. I always turn those off. Touch sounds and vibrate on touch so that as you're touching the keyboard and stuff, you have the vibration. All right, that's it for sounds. And display we just took a quick look at where we have the brightness all the way up, gang. I set it for sleep for 30 minutes and your font size is available. Sorry about all the birds outside. If you're hearing them, I got chickens around. Uninstall applications for the three uh, core ones that they've already put in. You can uninstall them if you're not going to use them. Maybe save up some space here. Facebook, WhatsApp, and uh, your tweet caster for Twitter. And then you have security where you can put in a password if you would like to. You have the device administrator, which is good that you have access to that. So if you put in certain apps that require device administration, normally you cannot uninstall them. But if you have access to this, you can deactivate their permissions and then you can in, uh, uninstall them. Definitely have a check mark for unknown sources so you can install apps from places other than the uh, Play Store. Verify the apps, warn if there's a problem. So that's kind of nice, I guess. Virus checking, perhaps. Auto Start Manager. It tells you what apps are going to start automatically at the beginning. Obviously, these would want to be interrogating the network all the time and using up lots and lots of your data and your battery. So if you're not going to use those apps, at a minimum, turn off their automatic boot up, then they won't start when you reboot the watch. And if you're really not going to use them, you might try uninstalling them. App permissions, manage the permissions that uh, you have, your mobile anti-theft capability to lock it or wipe it remotely. So a rather robust uh, trusted credentials, install from the watch, the certificates. This is like what you see normally on an Android phone, much more sophisticated in that section than you normally see on a watch. That's the security we just looked at. Oops. We were in settings. Uh-oh. Where am I now? Wow. I'm lost. <laughs> I swipe up and I touch settings. Mm -hmm. All right. We are security. SIM management is completely obliterated. You can't hardly read it. That's if you have the SIM card in there. Your basic backup and reset, where you can back up your data if you've got your Google account and reset the watch. And then about the watch, which tells us that we are running um, this kernel number. Are you reading that? Sorry about the dim lighting. It's a Friday, August 19th of 2016. The build number and the custom build number are listed there in case you get your watch. It looks like you do have the ability to do... Uh, system updates and wireless updates 
remotely, which is nice. So once you're on the internet, on your Wi-Fi connection preferably, you can check and uh, update the watch as necessary. Okay, that's all of our settings. Now we had, let's see if we scroll left, that's where we get to the notifications area. And if we scroll right, ah, we get to our uh, three or four little icons at the top saying that we have your health stuff. You have your step count, you have a dialer, and then you have weather, if you have the weather activated. And then back, back, back to your clock and back to your notifications. Oh, I think it actually saw me do that. If I swipe to the left, I'm supposed to get to notifications. There we go. When you swipe down, you got to that page, right? Closed in three seconds, it says. And when you swipe that way, you get that way. So the only thing left, and the button up looks like it takes you back and turns it off, is to tap and come in here. We haven't figured out how to change wa uh, watch faces. That touch and hold didn't work, though, so we've got to figure that one out. We have uh, your sports area in the apps, and that's showing you our um, steps. And you get a graph, it looks like, your kilometers and your calorie burned. And I could eat a piece of cheese today to burn off the calories that I just walked, I guess. <laughs> this is a, a new version we're starting to see of the health app concept coming in. Um, and that's about it. In the sports, it goes right into that. It doesn't include heart rate because there's no heart rate monitor on this watch, right? So your sports is limited to the pedometer. Clock is where you can set your alarms, run a stopwatch, or run a timer. This looks vaguely like what we've seen in the new Android 5.1 implementation on some of the other watches, but this is uh, Android 4.4 still. There's the um, barcode, QR code you got to scan in order to download the matching tethering app. Then we get into communications, another folder where you have your contacts, messaging, yeah, and phone, all with respect to the installed SIM card, not tethering on the watch. Your sleep monitor, you can start that and tell how well you have slept the night before. Then audio center, you have a sound recorder and uh, your music player that you can play music. We hit the sound recorder and give it a try. This is a recording test of the 1015 QW09 Android watch. Hit stop. Save it. Okay. I guess I got to go up here. Oh, look at that. You can change recording your voice quality. High in standard. It's on high right now. And you had the option of recording mode. Normal, meeting, or lecture. So that increases the sensitivity, I guess. Let's uh, let's try a meeting and do another one. This is a recording using the meeting mode to see if it changes any. I really apologize for you not being able to see this. I don't know that there's much I can do to make it uh, brighter. Are you seeing that at all? Okay. Let's save that. Now, somehow I should be able... Oh, here it is. You get to the listing, and here's what it sounds like. This is a I tell you, if that's all the brighter it is indoors, uh, you're going to be flying blind on this watch uh, outdoors. This is a recording using the meeting mode to see if it changes any. I don't notice much difference myself on that one. But that all came from the communications center. Uh, sorry, the audio center where we had the sound recorder and the, the token music player. So it'll play the music that you have installed. And that would be the installed music, I presume, on here. As opposed to the uh, Bluetooth tethered kind. Now you have camera. The camera is right here. And it's a two megapixel camera. Not seeing a whole lot. Are you seeing a whole lot? I guess you can kind of see outside. I can 
tap that and take a picture. I could tap that and now I'm recording a small video segment. And I guess stop it by hitting it again. And then you have settings that you can go in and adjust a lot of the things like exposure, color effect. I'm kind of telling you what's here in case you can't see it on the screen. It really, I don't see it hardly at all in the camera. And that's your stuff on here. And if we close, tap here, this is the video. Okay, that's the video, and then there's the picture. I can double tap and zoom. It does not support pinch and zoom, but I can double tap, zoom, and look around. And because you've got four gigabytes of space, which you really only have probably two gigabytes after everything's said and done with the operating system, still, you have some memory that you could record some short video clips and some pictures. And it's a front-facing kind of a camera. So when you have the watch on, and it looks like this actually on, you see how your camera is right over there. So if I go back out of here somehow, to the camera. There I am. Now I'm live again. You can see you have the ability to point the camera like this with your arm facing towards you and down a little bit. All right, just like the uh, two-year-old camera that I just showed you a moment ago. It's very same technology. All right, that's the camera portion. Then we've got health reminders. This is your sedentary reminders for standing up and walking around or drinking water. You can set those as you choose. We have tools which include the calculator, which is a basic calculator. Works well. Sliding to the left gets us out of all of that stuff. A calendar, which is a basic calendar. It goes left and right from month to month but it's not going to let you go into a specific day and do anything. Okay, I have not set the date and time on this, so it's off. And it says a browser. So the browser is in tools, and that's your web browser. It's not on the Internet, so it's already got these built-in stock uh, thumbnail pages like Google and Baidu and all those to go to. In the tools section, weather is weather, needs network, connectivity, and it wants you to turn it on. So that's nice. It guides you through all of that stuff. Uh, your remote control connection, you need to be in Bluetooth in order to play remote music, connect, find your phone, lock your phone remotely, and use a remote camera capability. These are all the functions you can do with tethering. Notice there's no answering phone calls. It's not going to do that. Then you have watch management, where you have your downloads. If you download any, you know, transferring from Bluetooth, over Bluetooth from your phone to your watch or back and forth. And then your overall file manager. Now, it says here that we have like 1.27 gigabytes of space. And I just recorded a tiny video and took one picture. So you don't have really a whole lot of space in here and you cannot add additional memory. You click here, you can go into these different areas. DCIM is usually where you have your camera, and there's our videos and pictures. If I click and hold, I can throw that away. Click and hold, and I throw that away. Now we can come back out of here and see what we've got. Still 1.27 gigabytes, so it didn't really change things by deleting those. You just don't have that much memory. That's in watch management. That's in the uh, red icon. Then you have multimedia, your gallery, and your videos. Well, I shouldn't have erased them, huh? But if you hit gallery, you should see your pictures and videos. You'd see the videos you recorded, and you'd play them just like we did um, from within the camera, and you saw that. Style is the type of layout you want. It's going to be either grid or list. We've been looking at them in grid style. And you have these different look and feel. This is kind of a 
black and white but with gold and this is much more colorful that's the one we've been using so far there's your Google Play Store if you're on the internet you tap it you can log into Google you have voice search Facebook Tweetcast and WhatsApp we saw all of those so the good news is you got the Play Store so you can download any apps you want uh, voice search should let you just press and speak and it'll do the searching probably without even needing to log into the Play Store. Nowadays, they're starting to do that, and so you can override it. You get the recent apps, and you can delete anything that you've had, or you can delete all of them, but saying clear all. Okay, and that's the run-through of all of the apps, and all we're left with is how in the world we change the watch faces. I guess we're going to have to read the manual for that one, aren't we? All right, let's read the manual. I always do that on the camera. Here we go. You guys stop me if you see how to change the watch faces, okay? <laughs> this is the uh, overall overview of the manual for this watch. Talking about the apps, the power key shutdown, Click and hold. You can set the standby clock dial, it says. The watch has a total of 44 clock dials. All right, we're going to have to try that. Wow. I wonder if we can actually install them. Since it's an Android 4.4, it's possible. One of the, one of the, the techniques might work to uh, install watch faces. Okay, still showing you more of the manual. There's the barcode if you want to scan it and get a feel for what the tethering app looks like. We're not going to be doing tethering in this uh, first look unboxing video, nor are we going on the internet or any of that. We're just giving you a feel for what the watch is like, what its capabilities are, what it can do without doing anything, being on the internet or connected to a phone, how much capability does it have by itself, and you've seen that. You can do a sound recorder, you can do some video clips, you got a calculator, a few things like that. All right, so it says all I really need to do is press and hold, and I got 44 watch faces. Well, if so, let's parade through them. I am waiting. Huh. If I slide left, I get notifications. I slide right, I get that stuff. Sliding works. Look at that. But press and hold, it doesn't work. Ah, it worked. There we go, finally. Okay, there's our first watch face. I am so sorry for this dim light. Oh, my goodness. Um, There's another one that you get, a round one like this. All right, we're getting a system here. It takes a while, though. Here's a square watch face in the square watch which is re rather nice and well since it takes so long to respond we're just going to page through them once I get it back again yeah all right there you got that one this one here wow That is full brightness. I can't believe it. If you live in the dark and you work in the dark and uh, you never see the light of day, this watch is for you. Hey, a lot of these watch faces look familiar from the custom design watch community. Now, that one looks like that Apple watch. I wonder if the butterflies flap. They do. Look at that. All right. So... The clock engine in here has the ability to do animation and stuff. That's neat. Oh, here's another butterfly flying. Look at that one. So they got a good robust selection of watch faces if you can get the uh, pressure just right on the screen. Your standard stock one. Oh, yeah, these all look familiar, don't they? These are your traditional watch faces that have been in many of the different watches. Okay, I've darkened the room a bit, so at least you can see the watch faces. Um, I thought about even redoing the whole review, but I'm not going to because you needed to see it what it looks like in regular light. This is very dim light right now. The camera is compensating, 
and we're getting this uh, bright screen as a result. But I just want to page through them so you get an idea of what the watch faces look like. A lot of these we've seen before on other watches. And if you press solidly and hold in the middle of the screen, you can get these to come up. That looks really nice on a square watch. Sure would be good if it was really bright. That's the only drawback. It could be that this particular unit has some sort of a little problem with the uh, lighting. Yeah, see, it's uh, finicky. Finicky is a good word. I'm pressing and holding, and it's getting the same effect as if I'm just pressing it. But then occasionally it goes in properly. There's another nice... Of course, it's gold, and the band itself, or the watch itself, is more of a gunmetal, kind of a bright gunmetal color. Get some nice round ones. Some pretty fine detail. The detail's coming up good. It really looks nice in the soft light, doesn't it? Good nighttime watch. Like they said, there are a lot of faces in here. Now we're getting to the digital ones. And that's our last one of the installed watch faces. Yeah, they don't really slide well either. Okay, well that gives you an idea of a little bit of what it looks like. In case you couldn't see some of the things in the settings when we went through them, here's our main categories. And again, about the watch, use this result. Okay, just wanted to add this piece on so you could actually see the screen. So I don't know, I'd probably pick something that's kind of bright so you can at least see the hands on it, like that one. But you probably don't see the second hand moving, it's dark blue. Well, you have been looking at the unboxing and first look at the... Uh, 1015 QW09 Android watch, which has a snap-on back that doesn't really snap on well, unless I don't have the battery in well. But the battery's connected, so it seems to be working. Um, camera, microphone, USB connector on the side, direct connect, that's a plus. Removable battery, that's a plus. Button on the front, that's the only button to activate it. Everything else is on the screen. You do not have capacitive buttons to go back or menu or any of those things either. Supposedly, there's an SOS button that you can program, but I didn't see the programming as we went through the, uh, the settings. Uh, perhaps I overlooked it. It's on its highest brightness of 5 right now and its highest volume. So, check the show notes if you're interested in this QW09 for uh, buying links directly to Everbind. Pick up this watch, and uh, best of luck. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with more watch reviews real soon.